Well, very good. Let's move on to uh, one of the constitutional duties for the legislature in this, the so-called short session of the legislature, um, the off-year session, whatever we may call it. And that, of course, is the bonding bill. And uh, this is an ongoing discussion. Let's start with you, Representative Jurgens. What do you think is going to happen with the bonding bill? Are there projects that you're particularly concerned about? Um, tell us, tell us uh, what your view on that is, and uh, then we'll uh, we'll give Rep uh, Senator uh, Torres Ray an opportunity and have a little discussion about this. Floor is yours. Well, this uh, this term, I'm not on the capital investment committee. I was for my first two terms, and that's still an area that has is of great interest to, to me. Um, we don't know yet what the what the bonding bill is going to look like. There are different rumors of, of numbers that are coming out. And, you know, the governor has his target number, and the um, Republicans in the in the Senate have their target number, and the in in the House there's a different number. So it'll all come together probably at the very end. What I would like to see done is a combination of of cash and borrowing um, with the budget surplus again, getting back to one time funding. Um, that would be a perfect use for it. I actually have a bill that uh, would spend $1.76 billion, but it would to to be uh, to eliminate debt. Um, there's stadium bonds, tobacco bonds. It would pay both of those off. It would pay off when, when you when you bond uh, for projects, you can only refinance those bill those bonds every 10 years. So any of those projects that are in that 10 year window, uh, I would pay those off with this bill. And then any projects that were that were approved in a prior bonding bill, but the bonds have not yet been sold, rather than take on the debt, it would pay for those in cash as well. And the total of that is $1.76 billion, which is a lot of money, but it would save hundreds of millions of dollars in debt service going forward on that. As far as projects, um, there's a project, it's not really, it's not my project, but I'm the chief author in the house. It's actually one of the governor's priorities. It's for the Hastings Veterans Home. Uh, the Hastings Veterans Home is on a beautiful campus uh, on the Vermilion River in Hastings, but the buildings, there's about six buildings total, and all of them are, many of them are over 100 years old. Um, the main building was built as a, as a hospital uh, for the mentally ill back in 1903 or something like that. Um, they really are beyond their useful life, and, and they looked at what would it take to bring those up to, uh, not necessarily up to code, but up to make them more useful. And it would be throwing good money after bad. So the proposal is to base, build a brand new, uh, or brand new uh, house or Hastings Veterans Home uh, on that campus. That's about a $60 million project from the state. And it would also require uh, about $135 million from the federal government. So. Um, that's a top priority for me. Um, I'd also, there's a, the uh, Dakota County uh, Jail is looking at a, a, an addition and they are seeking about a million dollars for um, the planning and design for that. And that would actually house uh, inmates that have mental health issues or uh, substance abuse issues and then a, a wing for female, specifically for female um, inmates as well. So those are a couple of things that, that I'm tracking. Um, I, I don't know. I, I would, if I were to guess, and it would only be a guess, I would say that a bonding bill, when it does come through towards the end of session, is probably going to be in about the billion dollar range, maybe a little heavier than that. Um, but how that breaks down between uh, borrowing and cash, uh, that will, uh, has yet to be determined. Senator Torres Ray, bonding issues. Yes, well, I we have some agreement here too uh, with Representative Jergen. I do believe that we need to have cash projects available. I I think that local communities are really asking for 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 cash programs for cash for some of their projects that um, are just really critical uh, to their community. So I am a a big supporter of that. Unfortunately, in the Senate. Um, it's my understanding that Senator Bach uh, is announcing that he will not have cash projects included in his bill. So that will be really um, very, very unfortunate. And, you know, we have, I, I have some, uh, you know, I have a delegation, so I have the privilege to work with the Minneapolis delegation. There's 15 of us trying to figure out how do we support uh, projects that are in the city that are really projects that serve people statewide. 
And that's one of the greatest challenges that we have in the city of Minneapolis, that a lot of our bonding projects, um, you know, are for buildings or projects that serve the entire state, not just the city. And the same is true for Hennepin County. But uh, by far for the city, the, the central city um, stormwater system, the stormwater tunnel is, is a big problem. The, the city has come to us multiple times to ask for that. You know, we're, we have uh, some aging tunnels that need to be replaced and it's a very expensive proposal for the city. So they have a, a, they keep coming to us to ask us for that. We also have some significant problems with public buildings that need to um, transition uh, for a plan of implementation with the federal uh, uh, regulations with ADA. And, uh, you know, we have old buildings in our city and it's a very expensive proposal for the city and the county to update, um, you know, doors and, and elevators. And so that we are behind with that and they have a proposal to do that. Hennepin County has something very interesting that apparently is, um, you know, supported statewide because we're going to do an experiment that will be really viewed nationally as the first in the country, which is to build an anaerobic digester. So um, people know that uh, we, we do a, a very good job around here in the county, the city, uh, collecting garbage. And we have uh, people have been doing this, you know, uh, collecting waste and separating and, and separating organics and, and recycling. And we have now a situation where we have a volume that is coming from homes that we need to dispose. And so there is a study, there is a project to, to really do that and hopefully try to, uh, you know, implement it statewide. But we have the volume in, in Hennepin County to be able to do that. So they are very excited about proposing that to the state of Minnesota so that we can uh, begin to, to do that in every, in every county. And we are also um, very um, strongly uh, supporting some of the housing uh, ideas that are coming uh, forward. I have a veterans home uh, in, um, I have a veterans project in, in Richfield, that is very important to me for building housing for uh, veterans that are, you know, really we have a, a significant problems with veterans that are not able to afford a home. And um, we have, uh, our delegation feels very important that we have to put funding into state parks. We, um, we loved our parks intently, intensely. During uh, the pandemic, everybody was in the parks, even working or, you know, uh, recreating, and it was uh, it, it was very tough. Uh, DNR gave a presentation of how uh, parks and trails really suffer as a result of the volume of people who were using the parks uh, during these two years, and we did not increase um, their funding, and so now they are having to to really. Um, you know, fix all of these problems that we have uh, in our parks and trails, and they do not have the sufficient funding to do it. And I think this trend is going to continue. I, I really love the idea that uh, Minnesotans are, you know, enjoying the outside where we have the most beautiful lakes and parks. We're famous for that. But uh, unfortunately, we don't have enough funding for that. So some some people are coming to us to, to really... Um, request, you know, and bonding is kind of a, a different issue. This is mostly DNR and legacy money that people are asking for, but we also have facilities that are outdated and, uh, you know, the Metropolitan, uh, the Med Council is, is talking about really the, the infrastructure that is suffering right now and uh, why we need to address it. If I, if I could. So, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Representative Jurgens. A couple, a couple of things that Senator Torres Ray said. First of all, I agree that that any bonding bill it, it will be heavy on infrastructure. I mean, that's the that's the idea behind that. And we're talking um, you know, wastewater treatment plants and higher education asset preservation, like uh, at the U of M and through the Minsk system, like maybe a, a chemistry lab, for example. Um, and and Senator Torres Ray mentioned the uh, storm sewers in Minneapolis. When I was on the capital investment committee. A few years ago on the bonding tour, I actually was 90 feet below the streets of Minneapolis taking a look at those uh, storm sewers to see the cracking that, that was taking place in there. And, and those are over 100 years old. So I saw firsthand uh, what that need looks like. Unfortunately, that year, um, the, the city of Minneapolis prioritized 
an entertainment complex in the Upper Harbor as their number one priority, and the storm sewers was the number two priority. And so uh, I, I questioned that at the time that 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 was the storm sewers basic infrastructure, uh, and and should have been probably prioritized higher than an entertainment complex. But um, Senator, I, I saw that my for my own, with my own eyes, and I see the need for. Um, the upgrades to the storm sewers in Minneapolis. And as far as the parks, the Metro Regional Parks um, is, it's kind of the, there aren't really state parks in the Metro area. So the, the Metro's version of the parks is the Metro Regional Parks. And, and every year they ask for um, a, a maybe $10 million and they might get five. And what they do get from the state is matched on a three to five basis or something like that from the Met Council. Um, I actually recommended to them this year that because, again, because of the surplus and one-time money, uh, that this would be a year that they should request even more. And I believe their request this year is, if I'm not mistaken, $30 million. Um, and that, that would help take care of some of the backlog um, that they have in the parks. And that's the uh, Three Rivers Park. It's Dakota County. It's Washington County. Um, and so that I, I agree with the senator in that respect as well, that, that this might be a, a a good year to get caught up on some of the backlog in the parks throughout the metro area. And what we saw during COVID is the usage of the parks has increased so much because it's something that families can do to get outside and uh, and spend time together, spend time in the outdoors. So uh, I think that that would be uh, another good use of one-time funding. <laughs>